just think we should start. Um, I might have to cut this short to an hour because I have an AMA to boost right after it at this phase. So yeah, this is get right started. All right. So uh, photography workshop. Now um, I, as someone, I wouldn't say I'm that uh, certified to be hosting this, but I sure am excited to give you guys some insights on stuff that I've learned in like a year or so that I've been doing photography. So yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so first of all, um, let's talk a little bit about what is photography essentially. Now photography for me now, you can read this slide whenever you want. Like I, I'll even send this after the workshop ends. Now photography for me has always been a way that I have been able to express my creativity into. So photography has always been a way for me to express my thoughts as I'm not a person who like, you know, um, express my thoughts, express my feelings uh, to someone in a way uh, like I, I'm, I'm not very good with communication, but that, that's, that's pretty much it. So I mostly use photography for expression for as an expression of what I think as an expression of what I feel as an expression of my creativity. So that's photography for me and photography has helped me a lot, uh, in getting various experiences from getting like backstage access to a young sinners concert to being, um, director in my school's photography uh, events. So yeah, um, photography has always been a huge um, thing for me and has always helped me um, connect with various people throughout the past years or so. So photography has different genres. So there is landscape photography. So landscape photography is basically when, uh, for example, you can go to the mountains and you take a picture of the mountains uh, so that's basically landscape photography. Now there are various ways you can do it. There are various ways that you can apply to make it better. And that of course, we'll be talking about them later on in this workshop. So there is portrait photography. Now portrait photography is when you take a picture of a person, essentially now it can be a person, it can be an animal and so sort of now animals is like a different photography, but it's essentially that. Uh, so portrait photography is that now street photography is what I like to do the best. So you just go to the streets, you just capture random moments on the streets and you hope to make a story out of it. So I have been doing a lot of street photography as well. And if you go to my page, uh, it's about it's watermarked on every slide. So yeah, please, please do check it out. So yeah, um, there's documentary and there are many more, um, and then now there's astrophotography as well. Uh, it's not mentioned here, but yeah, this, it just came to my mind now. Astrophotography is when you capture a picture of stars and like the Milky Way or the galaxies and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the different genres of photography. And uh, now light is a very crucial, now light plays a very crucial role in photography as well. Now, if you would have seen, if you, just go out and try to capture something if it's in direct sunlight or it's, um, uh, for example, if it's an overcast weather. So you'd see it's a more uh, pleasant and environment and you get better pictures out of it. That is because more light enters of your camera and you essentially get better pictures. Now we'll also be talking about what are the different sorts of light you can use now. now um, if you see direct sunlight. It's now it's just me going on a different tangent. Uh, if you go into direct sunlight, it's a very harsh light. Now, harsh light isn't very good as it, as it just casts different sort of shadows. You can see some shadows in here forming up and that doesn't uh, form like a very good picture, essentially. Now, if uh, on the other hand, if there is a overcast picture, overcast photo, then you'd see it's more a pleasant light. It's a more balanced, it's a more softer light that's easier and that's better and that looks more pleasant to the eye. And yeah, you will get a better photo out of that. So yeah, uh, moving on. Uh, let's start with mobile photography. Now mo mobile photography will obviously be looking into the more professional side of it. 
with the whole uh, what's ISO and everything. Now, there's just a few mobile photography tips that you can use is that you must clean your lens. Like if this is like my camera, you should clean this lens. Uh, otherwise, if there's dust, if there's grit, if there's um, like if there's a smudge on it, and obviously it won't look very good. Now, the second tip is that you should use different camera modes, especially like the different uh, portrait modes, like many new phones these days have pretty good portrait modes, especially like the Google phones, they have like very, very good portrait photography, uh, portrait uh, modes. Now there is landscape modes, night modes. Now Google again has a very good night mode um, and Samsung as well. So yeah. Um, you can experiment with different camera modes. Now, there's one thing that for mobile photography, there's a there's a huge part is that most people, like, you know, whenever they open the camera, they just take the picture on one X. Now, this is a huge mistake as, uh, I don't know if I, if I can show that to you guys right now or not, because I, I'm using my phone for the video camera. Now, uh, whenever you go, for example, into an iPhone app, you see different types of zooms that you take. Now, one X zoom, two X zoom, three X zoom. So I would recommend to at least use it 2x zoom un, uh, unless it's not like a landscape or a wide angle picture that you're trying to take. You should at least be using 2x if it's a person's photo that you're taking. Now 2x, what it does is that it makes the person more um, more visible in the frame. It's like the more focus is towards the actual person rather than you know the whole background that obviously comes along with it. So yeah, uh, for portraits, please try to like, you know, take pictures in 2X or 3X. And it honestly makes a great difference. Like if you, if you would ask me, then rather than even using the pro mode, if you just um, start using these uh, different telephoto cameras, then your pictures would start improving drastically. So another tip that is to use grid lines. Now grid lines is another thing that will be coming on when I talk more about the composition, uh, composition of different images that how you can um, place your uh, photos in a way that it looks more appealing to the eye. So we'll obviously be talking about them later on, but yes, please uh, turn these on. Most of uh, the cases have, okay, now just uh, take advantage of natural lighting conditions and consider using external lighting processes when needed. So yeah, we just talked about lighting as well. Now, uh, mobile editing apps, we'll also come on to them later on uh, towards the end of this. Now, yeah, moving on. Now, this is this slide only alone. If you just um, figure this out, if you know how this works, how the um, app exposure triangle works, you will be twice or thrice as better. Your photos will be much better as they are right now. So now there are three things to you know. Uh, first of all, let's start with shutter speed. So shutter speed, it is the duration of the time that the camera sensor opens and then it closes. So if you would see any camera, uh, I don't know if you can uh, let me just. So yeah, it's just, well, you might have seen like whenever you take a picture, your camera does a click sound. So that click is essentially your shutter opening and then closing. So the shutter speed is the time it is um, for the shutter to uh, open and then close. So if you would see here, here, yeah. So uh, one, four, one over 400 of a second, here, there's written here. So one, one over 400 of a second means that it just closes and it um, opens and it closes way quickly in like one over 400 of a second. So it, this is used in more of like in a situation where your subject is moving. For example, there's a dog or a child that you have to take a picture of. So I recommend uh, to take um, use lower shutter speed and that will uh, ensure that your picture is as sharp as possible. And, and again, we'll, uh, all the other factors of the exposure triangle come along uh, from in that as well. So, uh, and moving on, if you have like more and more, uh, you go lesser and lesser towards the uh, shutter speed. If you like even do like one over hundred or one over fiftieth of a second. So uh, your photos start to become more blurry or like they are more uh, prone to being affected by uh, different movements that can happen. So if I, you know, just do this, if my uh, camera was 
on like 150th of a second, you would see motion blur on it. And motion blur uh, in videography, we prefer that a lot, um, especially like if you are shooting on uh, 30 frames per second and if you have like one over 60th, you're shooting a one over 60th, that you, then you get like very cool motion blur and motion blur is considered pretty cinematic as well. So yeah, that's the side tip that you guys can know. So uh, as this um, diagram suggests, uh, the more uh, shutter speed you have, the more sharper your images will be. But again, since the shutter opens very fast and it closes very fast, there's essentially less time for the light to go in and then um, to go in the sensor. So your pictures might get darker and darker. So again, you would have to use a different as, um, features of exposure with the aperture and the ISO to balance it out. So, and again, if you uh, go towards lesser, uh, more, um, less and lesser uh, towards the um, shutter speed, your photos will essentially get start getting brighter and brighter, but again, uh, they will be more flow, uh, prone to getting blurred or being affected by different motion that you, uh, that, uh, you might have uh, in your uh, picture. Now, moving on, uh, there is aperture. Now, aperture, let me just, uh, oh, let me just explain it first. So aperture is essentially the opening in the lens. Um, so this lens is the one F 1.4. Now you guys know what, um, it does. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see. Okay. Yeah. Now, right now it is on one, uh, F 1.4 right now. Now see, uh, if I just move it. Uh, ahead, the camera bump gets smaller and smaller. I don't know if you guys can see it. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets f1.16, that is f16. So if it, this is the biggest. Um, it opens. So it's a the internal part of the um, of the lens of the little uh, hole has. Now. Uh, the lower your aperture is, the uh, better bokeh you will have. Now, bokeh is essentially like, you know, the background blur that's used in uh, whenever you take a picture in portrait mode on your phones, for example. So the background blur, that's essentially um, due to aperture. Now, the lower aperture you will have, f1.4, for example, that this lens has. So f1.4 will have like, uh, as it opens, like as it opens entirely, it will get more light in as well. So your pictures will become brighter and brighter, and it will also um, have a greater, have a smoother, have a creamier uh, background blur as well. So yeah, the picture is in better focus. Now, uh, if you just see these um, slides as well, so f two point eight uh, in this uh, is the lowest uh, they have in these diagram. So as you see, on f2.8, the picture, the subject is more uh, focused in the picture and then the mountains behind them are uh, blurred out essentially. And then um, as you go um, higher in the aperture, you start getting lesser light, but your pictures become more sharper and now the mountains are more visible along with the subject ahead of them. So yeah, now moving on towards ISO. Now ISO is the, um, sensitivity uh, is your sensor sensitivity to light. So the lower the ISO you will have, uh, the lesser sensitive your uh, camera will be. So um, lower values of ISO are ideal for brighter conditions. So for example, if you are in a very bright day on light, then like there's sunlight, then you, you are better off having uh, 100 ISO or like the lowest your camera can be. So, and then when you, for example, you are in a uh, nighttime or you're in an indoor situation, then obviously there is not much light uh, to begin with. So you, you um, crank up the ISO and your um, camera sensor becomes more sensitive. Your sensor becomes more sensitive to light and it starts taking in more light. So it starts, it's essentially making artificial light of its own. And that's why you would see like at nighttime, most of your pictures are a uh, grainier and so yeah that's essentially because your uh, iphone your, or your camera is cranking up the iso way too high uh, to let more light in and that's um because it's artificial light then that causes graining um in your picture 
So you can see uh, the higher the ISO, the lighter, but more noise picture has. And then with uh, lower the ISO, it's darker, and but uh, it's much more sharper, and it has much lower noise. All right, then moving on. Now metering is your exposure composition, uh, exposure uh, compensation, basically. So it's it um, involves it um, mixes all the factors of the exposure triangle, and it gives you a number uh, based on that. Now, if I, if I show you guys um, now here. This down All right. So if you might see here, you see uh, this mm where it is minus two point zero. Uh, I don't know here or something. So minus two point zero it means that there is much less uh, light in it, and minus two point zero means it, the photo is very very less underexposed now. Uh, I know uh, I'll, I'll have to show you guys much more of my room if I have to, but yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. All right. Now that I'm on F60, you guys can see it's a much more, um, the metering values are much more, it's in the positives now. So yeah, this is essentially uh, your, um exposure compensation that you guys have to see if it's like the best value that you guys that i'll prefer is that you keep in between zero and plus one because like if you uh, if you are underexposed and underexposed then overexposing the picture in uh post-processing or in lightroom is much more difficult as it might like reduce green and stuff rather than if you have a high exposed overexposed picture and then you can underexpose that later on if you guys want to in um, video editing applications. So yeah, it's uh, always preferable to overexpose your picture towards like plus one uh, between zero and plus. So that's that. Now coming on to different meter metering settings. Now this is more towards like um, camera based, like professional photography. So yeah, there are different um, types of metering. Now you can do spot meeting. Now spot meeting measures the light intensity, the exposure compensation at a very specific point. So, and then the center weighted measuring metering where it just uh, takes up uh, the center portion of an image and it uh, tells you the um, value of the exposure for that region. And then there is evaluator metering where it just takes the whole picture and it basically shows you um, its uh, exposure. Now, this is basically a diagram that shows how it works. Now, spot metering is that it's very, very focused on this region, and it only shows you uh, the exposure of this um, spot only, and then they sent to it. And so it essentially shows you the, um, the whole um, subject in focus and what's its exposure values like, and then it's evaluated matrix meeting. Uh, this is uh, the evaluative part is not uh, very recommended because again, if you have uh, like there's this moss, and if you have the whole evaluative matrix meeting on, then it starts to take in the uh, whole picture, and then you have the whole uh, sky taking in as well. So skies are essentially very very overexposed, and even if like this this picture has like the sun behind it, then it's it's gonna obviously get much, much more overexposed. So you might get the wrong metering value. So you would see like for you, the sensor would be showing you that it's like, okay, this is pretty exposed pretty well. But when you um, export that uh, photo in your phone, you'll see that, oh, this is underexposed. Like the photo that the subject that you are trying to take is not, uh, is not exposed um, properly. And that's because the metering value was of the whole image, not for the subject. So yeah, it's always preferable that you do center weighted meeting uh, to uh, measure your exposure values. So yeah, moving on um, using your phone camera profession. Now, first of all, there is the thing of compose your shots thoughtfully. Like now, as I said before, if you just start using the telephoto cameras, it makes a huge difference in your phone, uh, in your phone photography. So. Uh, compose your thoughts properly, and again, uh, we'll be talking about composition later on as well. So, utilize the different manual controls. Now, uh, if you just go to your this one, so yeah, if you just go to your pro pro camera. 
you will essentially have a lot more to work with. Now this has, now this has, you can see shutter S for shutter as well. And then um, ISO white balance and um, metering as well. So you can uh, for, um, change a lot of that stuff uh, through this and you can get essentially much, much better pictures to really this camera. Now this phone is like $150, I think right now in the month. If I'm not wrong, or even or even a hundred dollars, and like uh, pictures that I can show you that I took from this uh, phone is like you'll say that no, nah, man, you're 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 joking. Like, so yeah, it all comes down to how well you use your phone camera. You start using the telephoto camera properly, telephoto lenses properly. You start using the different uh, pro features properly. You start uh, taking in account the exposure triangle properly. Then you'll be getting much much better shots out of it. Now, <clears throat> exploring third camera um, app, now Lightroom uh, has a lot of cool features. If you just uh, download the Lightroom mobile application, it's free, like the basic um, features of it are free in the app. So you can just start and uh, start using its pro features. It, it also has a pro camera. So if your phone, phone software does not have the pro camera feature, then you can just essentially download the Lightroom mobile app and uh, start um, taking photos through that and Lightroom uh, mobile application also has an editing um, features as well. So uh, you can essentially edit your photos through Lightroom as well. Now you can also invest in additional resource accessories if you want to like um, do a photography for an event. Like for example, you have a relative's wedding coming up and you uh, want to take better pictures then uh, you can get um, smartphone lenses as well. Now, nowadays there are a lot of companies that offer lenses for smartphones as well. So they just um, attach on top of lens, on top of your lens, but again, they are much more expensive options. Uh, so yeah, it depends on how much you are trying to spend on it. Now moving on, let's, uh, we are starting the cameras um, now. So yeah, there are two types of cameras, DSLR cameras and mirrorless cameras. So DSLR cameras were the older cameras essentially, and then they, they are a few pros and cons of um, DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Now this one is a mirrorless camera. And now I would like, if you ask me, I would recommend you to get mirrorless cameras and gates, but there are a few um, pros and cons for each one. Now, since D DSLR cameras have been used to, for a long time now, uh, you can get a wide range of lens selections, longer battery life, or, since they are chunkier, more chunkier than you can essentially get a lower, uh, longer battery life. But again, that depends on the battery that the camera is using. Uh, they have an optical viewfinder. Now this camera does not have an optical viewfinder. Now uh, a viewfinder is basically, if you have ever used a camera, there's like a whole bunch here that you can see your photos through that. So that's a better way in my opinion to take photos. Now my camera doesn't have that. So I have to take pictures through this LCD screen that they have. So yeah, um, <clears throat> they have an optical viewfinder. Now DSLR cameras use a series of mirrors that are connected um, to, and then that image falls on towards the center while the mirrorless cameras, as the name suggests, they don't have mirrors in them. They just have a digital sensor in them. And that sensor alone captures the pictures that are being taken. Now, uh, the cons for DSLR cameras are that, of course, since they have a whole lot of mirrors up going on in them, they are larger, they are heavier, and they have um, sometimes a complex operation, um, complex in operating as well, and may require frequent maintenance. Right now, moving on to mirrorless cameras, they are compact and lightweight. Now you can see this is a very, very small camera, and the pictures that have come out of this, uh, come, came out of it, are like amazing. Like I would say, <laughs> in this form factor is pretty good. Now they have excellent video capabilities and a growing lens selection since more and more companies shift towards uh, reducing mirrorless cameras. Now Sony is like the, let's say the leader in mirrorless cameras. So yeah, if you're trying to get this camera, then you can go for Sony, Sony's APS-C lineup. And then there is uh, Canon M50s as well, M50 Mark I and M50 Mark II. And that, those are like pretty good beginner options. And then if you like, um, don't want to spend too much, but are still uh, trying to focus more on photography or more on videography and stuff, then I would recommend you to 
get a APSC. APSC is essentially the name of the sensor that's used. So an APSC size sensor in Sony, and that will give you a much more, much, 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 uh, much better uh, autofocus and uh, much. They have a uh, lot of other features that are going on as well. So yeah, a small battery life may have limited native lens options and since they involve evolving technology, so there are a lot of changes as well. Now, moving on, there are different lenses. Now, lenses is a uh, huge thing for anyone that is trying to come into this all photography or videography thing. So there are a whole lot of lenses that you can do. Now, I have the kit lens that came with, uh, with the camera when I bought it. And then there is this Sigma 30mm f1.4 lens that I got um, later on. So there are a few types of lenses. There are prime lenses, so they offer a fixed lens like this one. This lens is a prime lens, so you cannot zoom in. So this this is the focus range essentially. Like it doesn't happen like you when you uh, try to focus it. It doesn't focus like it's a fixed focal length, so 30 mm only. And then um, yeah, you cannot zoom from them essentially. But there's a huge uh, pro for them is that they offer ex excellent image quality. The prime lenses are often much more sharper than their uh, zoom lens, um, compact uh, zoom lens um, competitors, for example. So, and they offer a much more wider maximum aperture. Now, now uh, if you get a zoom lens for 30 mm, you would get like maximum f 2.8 or something. Now, if you have a prime lens, now prime lens can be much more have lesser focal length, so you can get much more bokeh, a much more background blur out of them. So this goes at still f 1.4, which is like pretty good in terms of um, aperture as well. So they are ideal for low light conditions since again, they have a lower aperture. So um, there's much more light that can come through the center as well. Now they create shallow depth of field. Now depth, shallow depth of field is a whole new concept. And it's like pretty, um, it's basically um, called background blur. So yeah, you can just uh, use it for as, as a name for background. Now, uh, zoom lenses are again like the uh, most common sort of lenses. Now, zoom lenses you can zoom in and you can zoom out. They have a ring uh, here, so you move that ring and it uh, and zooms out. So uh, yeah, it's pretty versatile for shooting various situations. Now, um, moving on towards wide-angle lenses. Now, wide-angle is essentially um, any focal lens that's like 30 mm. Now, this lens that I have would also come in like wide angle lens category. Like it's not that wide, but like, but again, it's pretty wide now. Starting from 30 mm towards 13 mm and lower from there, that is like the category of wide angle lenses. So anything that's 50 is like uh, for portraits, uh, 50, uh, higher than 50 is comes in like uh, the range of um, um, zoom lenses. So, and then there are wide angle lenses that capture much more wider uh, lens. Now, telephoto lens offer a longer fo focal length. Now, telephoto lenses are also like zoom lenses, but they can offer like huge, like you have, you might have seen like those huge Sony white, uh, white uh, lenses that uh, most wildlife photographers use or like uh, most astro photographers use for capturing like the moon and stuff. So yeah, uh, there are telephoto lenses and then there are macro lenses for, you know, to capture much more uh, detailed things, much more zoomed in for like close-up photography. So yeah, that's, they are macro lenses as well. Now, this is the most important part of, I'd say this whole workshop. So the composition, there are different composition rules. So there are the rules of the rule thirds, negative space, golden ratio, symmetry of foreground framing, complementary colors. Now, each of these, for each of these, I have a whole lot of examples that uh, we can see. So yeah, let's um, start with uh, the examples and then I can tell you what they are. Essentially. So this is the rule of thirds. Now rule of thirds is the most, <clears throat> is the most basic uh, rule of composition and it is the most widely used as well. So you'd see this is the part where I, where I was trying to uh, tell you guys about open the grid on your smartphone. So you'd have this grid that you can just open in your smartphone. So this is the grid essentially. 
so you guys can see uh, there's the lines that are going on here so just open this up then your smartphones and um then uh, for the rule of thumb it's that you um have to focus your sub um, put your subject in a way that it is on either uh, the center line like these these lines here or it is intersecting two lines so for example uh, if there is a person uh, standing here then um, you can uh, put these intersections towards this eye now i is the part where uh, for portrait photography it's like uh, where you focus where you try to focus the most so if this intersection is towards the eye um, then that would photo like if you would see if you just try uh, try it for yourself uh, you would see that the photo improves a lot now if you uh, just move on here it is the divide the frame into you have nine equal parts and place key elements along the intersecting lines or the intersections for balanced composition so yes okay now moving on to golden ratio now golden ratio is a you might have heard uh, what was that the fibonacci sequence so this is based on the fibonacci sequence like this is a whole lot of geometrical stuff that even i don't know what's it, what it's about but um this is essentially um frame that you can put on while editing now lightroom has it built in so you just press press i don't know i don't remember the exact shortcut but it just opens up and then you can crop uh, your pictures according to that now if you see the mola the mona lisa was built on the golden ratio as well so what um this basically does that you have to essentially uh, focus the eyes or the uh thing that you focus that you want to focus on the most uh towards this uh region towards where it gets like smaller so yeah like in this picture as well it's like the eyes that are uh, being focused on this and it just um, enhances the image a lot now yeah uh, you again uh, until you guys try it out for yourself you will not know that how much these things help in your photos you'll now if you just start following the rule of thirds and this golden ratio you'll see your pictures drastically so yeah uh, now moving on we have symmetry now uh, symmetry is a uh, huge part you can focus on um, during uh, photography now symmetry is essentially using leading lines or different shapes in your photos and the uh, and um, enhances your photos as well now if you see uh, it creates these leading lines towards something so you can see if you now this picture will be improved like a thousand times towards the end of this bridge uh, you have your subject there for example a person moving towards uh, looking over towards the ocean then that would be like pretty pretty good a pretty pretty good picture because like you have all these lines going towards him and then the um, it all leads towards the subject and that subject becomes much more prominent so for example now this picture is uh, the one i took uh, in andrun lahore so if you just see here um, this as the wall is leading on uh, the subject that's my friend and yeah it, it leads on towards the sub, uh, the the subject and the subject is much more prominent now this is also um uh, an example of uh, a foreground picture and which we'll be talking about in just a second now moving on uh, we have yeah this is foreground okay so foreground is essentially using uh, your uh, camera to have one thing ahead of it and then the fo you are focusing on another thing now irfan junejo uh, whom i have learned photography from i um, now this whole workshop is essentially based on the course that i took from him uh, so yeah uh, foreground is something that he uses a lot and i try to use it in my photography as well a lot so yeah if you just see uh, the picture on this left side of the uh, bachai mosque in lahore there is this these um um frames on the side you can say the metal bars on the side that focuses more towards the uh, mosque itself so you are essentially like making it much more prominent and it's a much more better effect to you to be used and if you just see the the one on the right where i used the uh, rock to create the foreground effect now this was in islamabad um so yeah there is the guys are moving downwards uh, slope and 
that's the picture essentially. Now it this um makes like the picture pretty pretty good. So yeah, uh, moving on. This is framing. Now, uh, framing uh, again improves the pictures a lot. Uh, the same example here as well. So this is essentially you are making a frame out of the natural things that are, that are in there. So this can also apply to, for example, to take a picture of a person standing in a door frame. So the door frame leading to a whole lot, uh, the whole a whole other uh, landscape. So yeah, this is another um, thing that you can uh, use in your photography and essentially makes it a whole lot better. So yeah, this, the one on the right side again was taken in uh, Andrun Lahore. Um, again, uh, the, this picture is that I, uh, I'm using the composition tools as well, while it also um, tells a story in a way. Now this tells a story of like how um, the poor people or the middle class people in Lahore and Pakistan uh, spend their lives and they just uh, go like, now this is a picture of like 6 a.m., 5 a.m. 5 in the morning. So that's how they start their day. They go towards on the street. Uh, on these barber shops on the streets, and they essentially get their um, beard done or stuff. So yeah, uh, to like having your pictures be uh, more appealing to the eye is one thing, and then telling a story from those pictures is another pretty essential part of doing photography as well. So yes, you should always keep these in mind. Now again, if you see these, now this one, now the metal bars as you see in there, you would have seen. Uh, these signs on the road. So there's a sign uh, pointing for pointing towards like the full sheet of the heart. And then I essentially uh, place my camera in between that and then use it as a frame uh, for this picture. So yeah, again, you, ha you have to be creative in these situations and you have to use uh, what you have. And that's what I essentially love about street photography is that it makes you think creatively and it makes you uh, start value valuing uh, things more uh, better as well because like one like again I'm going on a tangent here but uh, since I've started doing photography I've started to appreciate these little things these little uh, sort of you can say little um, aesthetic is I don't know it's it's not the right word here but yeah sure uh, aesthetic uh, things more and more uh, that it just fills you in with gratitude again. So yeah, uh, moving on. Now, uh, there's another thing called complementary colors. Now, complementary colors are essentially, um, there is the whole color wheel that you might've seen. So there are now complementary colors is a, a much more uh, wider topic and it will take a whole lot of time. Now in photography, the most basic complementary colors are like teal and orange and you, you guys might have seen like a whole lot of pictures following that. So this is um, pictures from Lahore's food street. So um, you can see the smoke is teal and then the fire from the, from the barbecue is essentially orange. So it is making the teal and orange composition and it just makes the picture look much, much more better. And same on the right hand side where the fire is orange and then the uh, light up there is um, teal. So yeah, it again um, creates a much more pleasing image. Now Netflix nowadays um, uses teal and orange composition a lot, especially the Bollywood in Bollywood uh, um, series series nowadays uses teal and orange compositions a lot these days. So yeah, uh, this is something that you guys can look into as well. Now uh, yes, now we have come on to Lightroom. I don't know how much time you have. Uh, we have left now. We have 10 minutes left before I have to move on. Uh, my other, um, my Twitter space. So yeah, let's get this. Let's just get started. I'll just share a few things about Lightroom. Wrap up. Okay. Just give me a second.
and then we can edit part together. Let's just take pictures from my recent shoot. Yes, it. All right. I hope you guys can see me. Okay. So yeah, this was this was a picture that I got from the photographer. And now, so the basic this is the whole uh, Lightroom uh, desktop um, Lightroom app, the desktop app. Now you can download this pretty easily. You can even crack it if you don't want to uh, pay it, pay for it. I can send you guys some links if you if you guys wanna um, download track, the track version of it. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Now the first part that I'll show you, I'll just show you my workflow. Now we don't have much time for me to get into each and every detail. So yeah, first of all, this uh, dropper is used to. Um, improve the white balance. So you just have to select this. And now you'd see this picture is a bit, uh, bit on the warmer side. So you just take this and select any white thing um, on the whole picture. So the clothes in, this, clothes in this picture are white. So I'll just select that. And now this picture is looking much more neutral. And then this gives us a much more um, empty canvas to later do um, our color grading. So now the temperature is good. Now we can start with the exposure. Now these pictures that I got were JPEG images. Now JPEG images are things that you cannot edit them much. So um, if, if I had like raw pictures for these, then I would have had much more, um, you can say, flexibility on how I want to edit them, but yeah. Let's just get started. So exposure for this image is pretty good. Um, but let's let's try with a little more gloomier uh, edit. So we can just decrease the exposure on it. Sure, okay. Uh, decrease the contrast. Now contrast, um, if I have the contrast cranked crank up way ahead, it just makes the picture look like weirder and much more like darker and weird colors, it just over oversaturates all the colors. So yeah, what I try to do is I like always, I in pretty much all my edits, I always decrease the contrast. Now it comes towards the highlights. Now there are different forms um, in different parts of the pictures. Now, um, I again, I don't have much time to like go into each and every detail. So the highlights are essentially the parts which are brighter in the image. So you can just, if you see uh, when I crank this up and down, it changes the um, picture. So we just decrease these and it just becomes a much more uh, lighter, much more um, unsaturated, much more light, um, darker. And then uh, I usually crank down the shadows as well. So the shadows that are created are like much more darker and much more, they like, you know, provide a much more gloomy image. And then also crank down the whites as well. And I, what this is again my workflow. So I always um, improve, um, turn the blacks up. So what it does is that uh, the diff, the black image, the face it essentially brightens that and I uh, cranks up the shadows and cranks up all the black parts of the image. So this is essentially very good. Now uh, it comes towards the texture. Now um, you can. I can essentially increase it now. Increasing it makes it like pretty weird and all textury and stuff. Now again, making the texture high um, can help you guys as well. But 
um, low end texture um, is better in like in terms of these, uh, especially in portrait photographs. So clarity and dehaze, I can just show you guys, but I'm not going to change it. No. So the clarity does like it softens the image a bit. Now if I crank it up, it sort of like makes it much more sharper. And if I turn it down, it makes the picture much more softer. Now in this image, it was good as it was before. So we must change that more. Yeah. Now dehaze again does pretty much the same thing. It over it saturates the image. If I tank it up ahead and if I um, turn it down, it just sort of desaturates the picture and like that is towards it. Now again, uh, all these tools are um, important in like different types of photography, but like for the photography where you already have the tool, you're pretty much set up. Um, you don't really need these clarity and dehaze options. Now, uh, what I do is I always um, turn the vibrance up. So what does these craft applications work? So it makes um, the colors that were not very bright before more, much more brighter. So if you can see the face, the facial colors are much more brighter now. Now saturation, what I try to do is like crank it a little bit, but not that much. Now this is the tone curves again. Uh, there are different factors with this. There are highs, mid tones, and highlights and stuff. Now I don't. Uh, remember it back of my head and the back of my head that what everything are, but this again, I can just show you guys what my workflow is and then you guys can uh, search later. So, uh, you guys, so you, once you come in here in the tone curves, you can just click on this white picture and that this essentially, um, shows you guys the whole graph of the whole picture that we have. So just turn it up, which this will be okay. Now it looks pretty, pretty good. Now this alone, you see the before and after. Now look uh, how much of a difference just this two to three minutes of edit does so you see the biggest picture now that's like good in terms of composition like it's a good picture but the edit is that what makes it uh from a good to a great picture so yeah now uh you can play with the uh, hue and saturation luminance as well but for this picture we're not going to change it much we can just uh turn the hue for it um much towards much more redder because the, like the lipstick becomes much more prominent in that. And yeah, I don't think we need to change anything else. Okay, so now here, here comes a color grading part that is very essential to taking images, uh, to editing images. Now in this picture, we had like, you know, the red that we have, so we were sort of going on with this red and bluish theme. So, um, the mid tones can be red, uh, not that red, but just a little red, so that you can see just the outline of that red light that we have on it, just a little bit. And then the shadows can be blue towards teal and orange. Again, this was me going towards again the uh, more of the deep orange side. So yeah, that is it. And now. There's a sharpening. I just crank it up like 90 or so, and then I click option. This I have a Mac view. I think um, on Windows it's control or something. So it essentially brings in this. And you can just see where the things that you uh, want to sharpen, and then I think this feels good. So it just sharpens up the whole image a bit. Now, if you have a green, a whole lot of green in the image, then you can crank up the noise reduction up and down and see. Uh, what works for your image. Now, if you have a picture taken out of a camera, I suggest to turn both of these on. But again, this was a JPEG image, so JPEG images do not have, like, you know, your a specific lens profile in that. So we can just turn these on or turn these off. It wouldn't make much of a difference. But if this was a raw image, then uh, again, it would have made much, uh, much more difference. So you can add green to your images. Now, this is for those film enthusiasts. 
like me uh, but again this was a brand shoot so um i was said to not add green to the pictures but again if you are sort of going for it towards a more film ish look so yeah i would always recommend to add a little bit green in your pictures as well if you go to my instagram account i have almost all of my picture all of my pictures have a little bit of green in them that i added just to make you know the film emu- uh, emulated in the form of a film that we had like here the now uh, this is the rule of thirds again if you just see here you, we have um, i've come on to the crop panel so if i just come here and yeah we have to take the google so this is pretty much closer towards the eye like this whole intersection here that you can see this is much more closer to the eye again if i um, like you know make it full on intersection towards the uh, eye then the logo might not you know in that much focus so yeah the closest that we can go is here so yeah this is the image and then you can just go to the files the head over and then you can just export that image so yes that's pretty much it for this workshop again uh, i would have loved to take any, take any questions and um and like comment on your photographs and like suggest um edits as well and stuff but yeah um i have to go for my to this space now 10 pm so yeah it was lovely to have you guys in and thanks a lot for joining in like i didn't expect this many people to join in but yeah thanks a, thanks a lot guys um, I usually don't do much public speaking but yeah this was a very fun experience. Thank you so much. Um yeah. All uh, right then. I think uh, we can end this now. So uh, I don't know if you guys learned from it or not I'll share the resources that I have. about photography as well uh, after the sense and yeah that will hopefully make uh, a whole lot of difference i uh, by the way i'll also share my pieces with you that you can just pop in your uh, lightroom pictures and hopefully it makes them better as well so yeah i'll see you guys in the groups thanks for joining bye